All right, hello. My name is Christopher, IBPA member liaison, and this is one of our IBPA member benefits webinars, and we're trying to give people an opportunity to learn more about the benefits. And I'm very excited today because we are talking about the IBPA NetKelly program, which I run at IBPA. And if you want a more detailed description of that program, this is a really great page. I'm actually going to go over some of the stuff, uh, but I'm going to be putting that in the chat function right now. So check that out. Um, so here's how we're going to do the webinar today. I'll do the first half, and it's just going to be kind of like basics of what the IBPA NetKelly program is, pricing, stuff like that. And then we have the uh, sales manager from NetGalley, uh, Katie Versluce, who is a genius, and she will go through all the kind of like deeper stuff about what's so amazing about NetGalley. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Um, for my section, the real quick, I would just want to say my goal, I want everyone's books to succeed in our program. Uh, there's an audiobook program and, and a, a digital galley, which is the digital version of your book. Um, so I want your book to succeed. So I want to make sure that we're setting you up. So that's what this webinar is about. But I also have a document called the Getting the Most Out of Net Galley that when you order the program and it's posted, I will send that to you. And it has all kinds of helpful tips. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, of course, uh, you know, I can only do so much. Net Galley can only do so much to, to help your book succeed. It's kind of also on you as well. So we're going to kind of give you tools about how you all can succeed. Uh, so where I want to start is the differences between if you do the NetGalley program through IBPA or if you do it directly through NetGalley. Um, so the first thing is pricing, and I'm going to go through that in more detail later, but that's one of the aspects. Uh, another really important thing is the read now versus reader approval. So the read, it, it, if you go through the NetGalley program, you can do both options. So let me explain what they are. Read now means if somebody goes to your page to look up your audiobook, or your digital galley for your book, they will be able to immediately download your book and or audiobook, and they'll be able to read it immediately and listen to it. If you do the reader approval, uh, and again, this is directly if you post it through the NetGalley program uh, through them, uh, you will then be able to pick and choose who listens to your audiobook and who reads your book. Uh, so as the IBPA program is set up, we only do the read now option. So we do not do most popular places on that galley. And again, we're setting your book and audiobook up for success. So we want to make sure as many people as possible see it. And uh, a lot of the people who do our program, um, you know, your indie publishers, author publishers, uh, you're not Stephen King or uh, you know, John Grisham or something. If they were to post their books on that galley, they probably immediately get like millions of downloads or whatever. Um, we want as many people to see your book and get you as much exposure as possible. So read now is really the best way to do that. But again, if you really want to be more in control of it, then you're welcome to do it directly through NetGalley. Um, the other very important distinction is if you do the NetGalley program through IBPA, uh, IBPA is the admin. And that doesn't mean that you don't have access to the same stuff. That just means that you will email me and you will say, hey, uh, after I post your book, you'll say, hey, I changed the the pricing of my book, can you change the pricing? So then I go in the back end and I change the pricing. Uh, same thing with your reports, which Katie will explain more later, but you have access to the reports. You just don't go into NetGalley yourself and download them. You just email me and say, hey, can I get the reports? I'm happy to send them. And just so you don't get confused, there is a thing called the NetGalley free reader account. You can create that and you can go on NetGalley and you can act like you're just some other reader and you can see your page, but that has no affiliation with your book, right? So you can't create a free to reader account and then go in and do things to your book page because again, it's not posted through that page, it's posted through us. People get confused by that, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so that's kind of the, the main thing. Okay, so I want to go down and I want to share my screen and uh, Katie, you can tell me and make sure that it is uh, when I get to that point. I haven't shared it yet, uh, but when I do, you can tell me if it's uh, sharing properly. Um, and I want to then show you all the, uh, the how to find the NetGalley program on our uh, our website so you're not like confused. Uh, okay, so what do you see right now, Katie? You probably see my screen, right? Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, and it's just the uh, it's just the web browser, right? Yeah, I okay, great. Okay. Network. 
Awesome. So this is the IBPA main page. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to this section. There's more than one place, but this is the place I want you to go through. Uh, under this tab called membership, you see it says benefits. You can either go to list of benefits. You don't need to. Just click here, member benefits. And on this page, we have all of our member benefits. I'm going to do a find. You're welcome to scroll down. But as you see, I looked for Neck Alley earlier. So I just looked for the Neck Alley program. This is the page that I want you all to go to. I'm again going to put this in the chat for you um, in a bit because I want to make sure that you all uh, you know, see this page. So I'll put it in the chat uh, in a second, but when I'm sharing my web browser, I can't do that. But here's where it explains the whole program. And if you're welcome to read later, I'm not, I'm not going to just sit here and read the whole thing. Uh, but here's what I wanted to uh, show you. Um, uh, one of the most important things is there's this part right here. It says click here for more details. And this is a really great, uh, helpful document. It's 17 pages. I know it's long, but I, I get a lot of questions about the program. And I created it so people don't have to ask me these questions. They're answered in here. It talks about the type of files you need. It talks about um, what happens when the book's posted, uh, all kinds of stuff. So when you go to that page, download this and, and read it. Uh, it's, it's very helpful. Um, OK, so. Uh, here's the different options we have for the NetGalley program. Uh, you have a digital galley. And again, that is the digital version of your book. Uh, so we've got the three-month listing, and we have a six-month listing. Uh, so if you go directly through NetGalley, they have a six-month listing, and it's uh, 450 And if you go through our program, it, we have a three-month listing uh, that is $199, and then a six-month listing that's $399. Uh, so um, it's a, a kind of a nice discounted rate for our members, and we greatly appreciate NetGalley uh, for offering that. Um, audiobook options. Uh, we have three different options, a one-month listing, a two-month listing, and a three-month listing. And you'll notice uh, we help you all out where we, if you do a two or three months, um, you'll get 10% off then if you had just done like uh, one month. Each month you get a little bit of a discount. So that's that's very helpful. Okay, so these are the promotional programs I was talking about. Uh, again, Katie's going to go into more detail. I'm just kind of going over the general pricing and such. So there's two options for a category spotlight, and she'll explain that. Um, so the top, there's the top four categories, uh, which is uh, romance, teens of YA, mystery and thrillers, sci-fi, and fantasy. So if you're one of these, your book's in one of these, you're going to want to get the top four category. Uh, if your book's in any other category and you want that to be your category for your ad, then you will get the category spotlight for the all other categories, which is just 110. And the top four is 125. Um, then we've got a featured placement, and that is 125. And again, uh, we'll explain all the details. But if you want to order from this page, you'll just click on any of these. So you click on that, and it'll open this page. Something that's really important is, uh, Notice how the pricing is 310. That's because I'm not signed in. So you'll want to sign into your IBPA account, uh, which is up here. It says sign in in order to get these rates, uh, the cheaper rate, the 110. It automatically takes off $100, $200. Uh, so I'll go back to this page real quick. So this is kind of the, the main thing. Um, one thing I wanted to share about this program, and it's in this document too. You'll see it goes through all the different uh, explanations of the program. but um, the types of files. So um, I really want to highly recommend get a professional to create your ebook files. Um, we have a, a lot of um, people that will give me a file and it will end up being uh, something that they try to create themselves. And we, we uh, would prefer people not do that because a lot of times there's all these technical issues with them. So uh, they accept an EPUB, a PDF, and they accept a, a Mobi file. Uh, if you give us an EPUB, it automatically converts to a Mobi file. And so you will then have both an EPUB and a, a Mobi version. So um, at that sense, you can probably just give us an EPUB. And that's for every book other than picture books. So if you have a children's picture book or a cookbook, you're going to want to get us a PDF. But um, I'm not going to go into all the details about the sizing and stuff. It, it's in this document, but just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so um, then something else I wanted to kind of mention that's uh, really helpful um, is as your primary ISBN, if you have a paperback version, you should use that as your ISBN for the primary. 
Uh, there's a few reasons, uh, one of which is when your book archives, their website, NetGalley site, will look for your book on other websites, such as Amazon, IndieBound places, and it'll link looking for the paperback ISBN. And if you use your primary ISBN uh, as your ebook, uh, sometimes it doesn't exist and it's hard for it to find. So use your paperback ISBN for your primary ISBN on the metadata form. Um, and so anyway, after you order the listing, uh, you're gonna get a email and it's gonna have a form that says, you know, uh, download this for next steps. And so download that document and it'll walk you through step by step. Make sure you read the entire document because there's multiple steps. Uh, so if you download the, the form, you'll, you'll notice that, um, uh, you know, there's like three pages or four pages. Um, so make sure to read the whole thing. Uh, so I do have a lot of other tips, but I want to send it over to Katie. So let me, uh, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. And then let me get to the uh, exp uh, intro for Katie. Okay, uh, so Katie Versalus is the sales manager at NetGalley. Uh, she works closely with authors and publishers of all shapes and sizes, uh, helping their books reach the hands of passionate book advocates and industry professionals. All right, so uh, Katie, uh, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna give you the ball. So give me two seconds to make you the presenter. So it takes seconds. And once you see that ball on your end, you should be able to share the screen. Yeah, I think we're up and running here. Um, thanks so much for that intro. And it's so nice to be here and presenting with you. Um, Christopher and I have worked together for a long time now. Um, and it's always a joy to see his name pop up in my inbox. So um, <laughs> it's been great to finally get to do this. Um, so I will just go, go ahead and start sharing my screen here. And get this going. Okay, so everyone can see my screen now at this point. I can see it just fine, so okay. hopefully everyone else can, but. Perfect. Yeah. It's good enough for me. Okay, so um, Christopher already did um, a really great job at introducing, oh, so you know what? I also um, just wanted to <laughs> go ahead and stop sharing my um, screen here, or sorry, stop the video because I just want everyone to be able to focus. So I'm just gonna disappear for real quick for a second. Um, okay back up and running here. All right, so uh, Christopher did a really great job at summarizing um, the IBPA's NetGalley program and what it has to offer. So um, I'm here today mostly to talk about the tools that are available to you um, using the IBPA's program, as well as go over some frequently asked questions. Um, and I also really wanted to challenge the attendees here today, not just to think about NetGalley as a way to get reviews for your book, um, but as a tool that you can use to achieve your goals. So what that means essentially is that um, as we're looking at the features that are available to you, um, consider how they can be incorporated in the work that you're already doing, um, as well as how you can expand it to reach the communities that you may not have reached yet. All right, so who is the NetGalley community? Um, each reader type on the site is made up of five distinct categories, which is um, something that they decide at sign up, depending on how they want to use the site. Um, this slideshow screen here shows how the NetGalley community is divided up by percentage into their member types. Um, so we have here reviewers who might be bloggers, social reviewers, podcasters, bookstagrammers, booktubers, or traditional reviewers, of course. Then we also have our educators who may be elementary school educators all the way up through university educators who um, are looking for tools um, to make a part of their classes. We also have media who may be traditional media who might cover books for newspapers, magazines, radio shows, etc. And then we have librarians who may be school, academic or special librarians for all age groups. And then of course we have our booksellers who range from indie bookstore workers to distributors, chains, and online retail stores. In addition to writing reviews, it's always important to remember that there are other impactful ways that NetGalley members are using the site. So for example, a bookseller uh, may not just be using NetGalley to provide a review, 
um, they might be uh, using the site to decide which books to order for their shelves. Um, and a librarian may be deciding which um, books to add to their collection for their library. And of course, these members can join and use NetGalley at no cost. Um, in fact, actually, librarians can also nominate your title for library reads directly from NetGalley itself, itself, which can be an incredible boost for your books. Um, and the booksellers can do the exact same thing for the Indie Next list. And we also encourage authors and publishers who are using NetGalley via the IBPA to sign up for a reader account themselves also at no cost. So Christopher mentioned that earlier. Um, we always recommend someone who's using the IBPA to also create a reader account. Um, this way you can download the book or audiobook yourself. You can view your files and your title, title record in the same way that a reader would. Um, you can see any reviews or cover ratings that might come rolling in. And you can also use the site to see how other authors and publishers are promoting their books. And you can take inspiration from other comparative titles on the site. Um, really, it's just a really easy and reliable way to do your own market research um, for what's new and exciting and most importantly, effective. Okay, so one of the most frequently asked questions we get is how and where NetGalley members share their reviews because of course NetGalley members can post their reviews on NetGalley itself, but many of them also share their reviews elsewhere online, like on a blog, social media, or retail sites like Amazon. The first way they do this um, is through one-click sharing. So with our one-click sharing, NetGalley has provided a way for members to automatically connect their social media accounts to their NetGalley account, um, which pushes their review from sites like Goodreads, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And we also make it easy for members to copy and paste the reviews to retail sites. Um, so those would be Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, etc. Um, these members just need to click um, the link that takes them directly to the book on these retail sites, paste the review, and it's posted publicly for everyone to see. And of course, since many books listed on NetGalley are pre-publication, um, and sites like Amazon doesn't allow reviews pre-publication, um, we also send reminders to our members for when a book goes on sale. So we do this uh, weekly via email reminders, as well as on the member's shelf on the site itself. Um, if a member has posted their review on their own personal blog or website, there's also a special section for links like this that are shared with the publisher in their reporting, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. And of course, it's not to be overlooked that um, a review on NetGalley itself can be just as impactful. Um, worldwide, NetGalley has well over half a million dedicated readers, and many of our members use NetGalley exclusively to discover new books, uh, make buying decisions, and provide word of mouth recommendations to their own communities. So while we are talking about how members use the site, I just wanted to do a quick overview of how members are actually using NetGalley to discover new books. Um, for those of you who haven't actually used the site before, um, either as a publisher or as a reader. So when they navigate to the Find Titles page, members can see our full catalog of titles. This page here um, in that uh, image on the left um, highlights the newest audiobooks and have um, that have recently been added to NetGalley, as well as some digital reading copies that are featured this week via a marketing program that IBA, B, IBPA publishers can participate in, um, which Christopher mentioned earlier. Um, you can see that this week's theme was children's and middle grade, just down there at the bottom. Um, on this page, they can also jump to particular categories or browse based on a few popular catalog views for both uh, audiobooks and digital review copies. So you can see that on the left hand side there. Um, and you can see that members can sort by read or listen now, which um, is where all IBPA titles will live. When a reader is approved to access a book on NetGalley or they click to read now or listen now, um, they can download it in a number of ways, including the NetGalley Shelf app, which is the exclusive way to listen to audiobooks on the site. Um, and in addition to the Shelf app, readers can also download their digital reading copies to an Adobe supported device, um, which includes their computer or the Nook. Um, and they can also send the file to their Kindle device or application. 
Each option offers DRM or uh, file security applied on the file, which means that it can't be copied, shared, printed, etc. So I have been mentioning both audiobooks and digital review copies throughout this presentation, but um, I really wanted to give a bit more focus to it here, since audio is fairly still a new program on the site, and we're still really excited about it. Um, so in 2020, uh, NetGalley experienced record-breaking traffic and engagement as a result of the launch of the NetGalley Shelf app and audiobooks in the summertime. Since then, NetGalley's member community grew by 23% on our .com site, um, because we have sites in the UK and France and Germany, et cetera. Um, but 23% just on .com um, after the launch of audiobooks. And the amount of feedback that publishers are receiving as a result has also increased. Um, almost a million total feedback and reviews provided during this time. Audiobook listeners are some of the most engaged readers we we're finding on the site. Um, and we find that librarians in particular are really important consumer, consumers of audiobooks, um, likely because it just helps them to get through books faster. And any way we can make librarians' lives a little easier is something that we are happy to do. At the moment, um, the IBPA's audiobook program is the only way to list audiobooks on the site on a per title basis. So be sure to, be, to take advantage of their program if you have an audiobook. All right, so moving on to one of our most important tools on the site, the widget. In addition to requesting NetGalley um, digital review copies or audiobooks from the catalog, another way that a member can be granted access to your book or audiobook is through a tool called the NetGalley widget. The widget is a pre-approved link that allows a reader to download the secured file from NetGalley. So you, as the author or publisher, can and should include the widget in outreach to your own list of trusted contacts. Even if they are not yet a NetGalley member, they can always sign up. As an IBPA member, during your title setup, um, Christopher or someone else on the IBPA team will send you a copy of your open widget. The open widget means that anyone who receives the link can click on the widget, log in, view, and then download your title right away. So this means that you can send the widget to all of your personal contacts and they'll be automatically be able to download your book um, if they have or create a NetGalley account. And as of course, as mentioned, um, all NetGalley files are protected with built-in DRM and you can always see a full list of everyone who has accessed your book, whether that's through the widget or otherwise uh, via your reports, which again, we'll talk about in detail a little bit later. Who do I send it to? That's definitely one of the most important questions we get, um, most fre frequent questions that we get. Um, and while the answer to that can depend on a lot of factors, but in general, the widget should be sent to anyone who should be receiving a free digital copy of your book. This could be a list of powerful bloggers, librarians, booksellers, or book clubs. So just for, as a quick example, if you have an upcoming uh, sports memoir, it would be a good idea to send the widget to a blogger with a special interest in that sport or even an influential coach or player. Anyone who has an important voice in the industry should receive the widget. If you're a publisher, um, it's also a great idea to share the widget with the book's author so they can do their own outreach with their own list of contacts. And you can also add the widget to the monthly newsletter that you're already putting out or if you're attending a conference or event, you can share the widget URL with attendees or perhaps create a QR code if um, we ever get to attend conferences in person again. All right, let's move on and take a look at what kind of data is available to you as an IBPA publisher using NetGalley. So first here at the top of the list, we have our detailed activity report, which can be an absolutely amazing resource for a publisher. This Excel report shows a list of all of the readers who have shown an interest in the book by clicking the request button, which is um, available to you if you're listing with NetGalley directly, or the read or listen now buttons, which uh, would be used if you're listing via the IBPA. This report is uh, really excellent for following up with readers, to remind them to download the book if they haven't done so already, or to ask for their feedback if they haven't submitted any yet. 
Generally, publishers find an increased feedback return when using this report, and it's a really great way to connect with your engaged readers. You may also want to use this report to contact readers to tell them when the book is on sale or to make them aware of any, any publicity events that the author might be participating in. After that, we have the feedback report. Um, this consolidated Excel report collects all of the information about the reviews a publisher has received through NetGalley. This report can be used to identify which members are actively engaging with your title, um, and you can use it to email these readers to thank them for their feedback. You may even want to use this report to give them information about the book, uh, the next book in a series um, that the author is, is coming out with, or perhaps a similar comparative title that you think they might like. And if that's the case, then you should definitely send them a widget to that other book. And then next, after that, we have our opinions report. Um, this report shows individual responses from member specific questions, such as, would you order this digital galley or audiobook for your library, um, which is asked to librarians. After looking at this information, you might consider reaching out to interested booksellers to arrange an author webinar um, with their store specifically, or um, perhaps you like to offer to connect media to the author for an interview. And then next we have our snapshot PDF, which is an easy to share PDF of all of the data being collected about your book. Um, and we're going to talk about that in detail a little later on, but first I wanted to touch base on um, reporting best practices. So we do always encourage publishers to use NetGalley reports to follow up with members regarding their activity. Um, however, it's really crucial that authors and publishers must comply with all local laws and statutes relating to the production and legal use of members' personal information. So publishers may use visible email addresses in these reports to contact members directly. However, communication to these members must only relate to that member's NetGalley activity. If you will be emailing multiple members at the same time, please remember to use uh, the BCC function in your email so that the email addresses are not visible to everyone else who is receiving that email. Some great examples um, for using this information available in the reports are um, following up with members to remind them to submit or share feedback for a book that they've downloaded or inviting members to request or download via a widget link another one of your books that they might enjoy on NetGalley, while clearly acknowledging that the invitation is based on their prior activity. Of course, if you have any questions about proper use of your reports, you can contact Christopher at the IBPA, um, and he can tell you a bit more info about that um, and perhaps forward along a full list of best practices for this. Okay, as promised, um, I wanted to hop back into that uh, snapshot PDF report that we were talking about earlier, which is one of our most important and I think interesting reports on the site. Um, which, of course, is um, in particular for IPPA members who can actually log into their own account and see this information themselves. So the exportable snapshot PDF is a great way for you to be able to see all this data. So this screen here shows all of the information that can be found on the snapshot PDF itself. Um, as you can see here, a book can receive a star rating, impressions, cover ratings, and specialized feedback from each member type. Um, which can also be found on that opinions report that we just talked about. Um, we won't go into depth about all of this info because there's a lot <laughs> and you can do a lot with it, but um, here's some of what that data means and how a publisher might find it useful. So the statistics section here, or A in this infographic, shows a title's general performance on the site as well as how members are following through. So you can take a look at this, uh, the relationship between the impressions there, um, click to read and feedback to see how your pipeline is working. With this section, you can see whether the strategies that you're enacting are successful. We've got the reason for request section. So that is E and F on this infographic provides early indicators about what aspects of a book are resonating with readers. In other words, why are they requesting your book in the first place? A publisher can use this information in two ways, both to see what is working and to see where there is room to try a new strategy. So um, just as an example, 
most NEC Alley members are requesting, um, if most NEC, NEC Alley members are requesting to access your book based on the description, then you know that your copy is effective and catchy. If most members are requesting based on the author, you can capitalize on that, on, um, on that personal connection in your ongoing marketing and outreach. On the flip side, um, if only a few NEC Alley members are telling you that they're requesting a book because they keep hearing about it, you can tell that you might need to be showing that book in more places and be more proactively building your word of mouth buzz. In section D, you can see the cover ratings that have been collected throughout the book's time on the site. If you see a lot of thumbs up for your cover rating in the snapshot PDF, you know that you have an especially co compelling cover. You should consider using it um, rather than say, for example, author photos um, in marketing campaigns and social media posts. Um, and just a quick tip, if Nick LA member is only lukewarm about a cover design, um, most of the time they won't actually downvote it. So you should definitely consider downvotes to be strongly held opinions. Earlier um, in the presentation, at the beginning, Christopher mentioned some of the marketing that's available to authors and publishers using the IBPA programs. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute to show some examples of what those programs might actually look like on the site. So just for quick reference, um, promoter titles are consistently among the top requested and reviewed across the site. And they make up a majority of industry lists, such as the Indie Next list and library reads each month, which as I mentioned earlier, um, those two can be actually nominated through NetGalley itself um, when a librarian or bookseller um, actually submits their nomination for that um, through NetGalley directly. So here we see an example of both the category spotlight and featured titles program. So um, both of these can be found when a member is browsing through the catalog. Category spotlights can be found within a particular category or categories on the site, which is perfect for promoting to passionate fans of a genre. So I would definitely recommend that for um, fantasy titles and, um, you know, those ones who are very, very passionate fans, romance, for example. Um, and the info uh, that's found on the category spotlight there, so all of that text and info and the title um, is decided by the publisher or author themselves, so it's totally customizable. The featured titles, um, which is on the bottom right there, um, is found on the Find Titles landing page. So that is um, the front page of the catalog. It's what, exactly what they see when they click Find Titles. Um, these titles are grouped together in distinct themes to target engagement. You can see here that the, this week's theme was debut authors, um, which is one of our most exciting weeks on the site for readers. It's always really fun to see the buzz that happens when we do debut author weeks. Next, we um, have our eBlast. So if you have a NetGalley subscription account or choose to list with NetGalley directly on a per title basis, you also have the option to participate in our dedicated eBlasts and newsletters. So this slide here shows a few examples of what our dedicated e-blasts can look like, which are sent to our most dedicated readers according to category, member type, or location. So we'll never send your e-blast to someone who hasn't logged into their account um, in five years. It's always the most engaged, dedicated readers who are super passionate about books like yours. Nick Alley e-blasts are extraordinarily successful and are our most popular promotion. They are a really great way to run a special campaign. So um, for example, limited time access, if you wanna run your book um, for wishes, a read now sampler, or uh, just a jumpstart request, reviews, pre-orders, and of course, word of mouth. And then of course we have our newsletters. So here's an example of our weekly newsletters, which have a number of different books from different publishers and authors that are grouped together by genre. Um, or by type. So um, this example here, again, shows more from our debut author weeks, which uh, features some of the buzziest debut authors of 2021. So these are really um, exciting books that are upcoming this year. Okay, and that brings us um, to the end of the presentation. On this slide here, you can review a few different ways that you can list your books on NetGalley 
including via the IBPA and through NetGalley directly. Um, so Christopher sent a few links earlier in the chat to how you can sign up via the IBPA, including more info about just signing up for the IBP in general. So you should definitely check those out. Um, and when listing through NetGalley directly, we have the option to list on a paper title basis, um, which is great for authors and smaller publishers. And then we also have our subscription option, which is, which is best for publishers who have at least eight titles throughout the year that they'd like to list on the site. And um, IBPA members uh, receive 10% off the first year of service um, for the subscription option when listing with directly um, with NetGalley directly. So um, if you have any questions about listing with NetGalley directly, you can email me at katie.versluce.netgalley.com. Um, as well as, well, Christopher should be sending along a copy of this, these slides here, so um, you don't have to drop down my email address right away. You'll have that info available to you later. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Katie. That was uh, very informative. And we do have a lot of questions. So yeah. I'm going to put in the chat again real quick. Uh, this is the main page in the chat right now for the NetGalley program for IBPA. So um, again, it covers pricing, it covers like that, it has that form that I told you all about that you can download that has 17 pages explaining the program. So I highly recommend clicking on that. Um, it will be able to give you a better understanding of the program more than it, it, we don't have enough time, you know, right now to go through every detail. So that's kind of the, the bigger detail. So. Um, Katie, uh, oh, oh, it's something else that just wanted to mention, and uh, Katie mentioned this, but I want to make it very clear. So, NetGalley is definitely more than just getting reviews. Getting reviews is absolutely a part of NetGalley, and it's really a great part of the program. But as you saw, there are so many other benefits, and I think people sometimes forget that because they, you know, they, they, in the beginning, they like, you know, after like one week, they're like, why well, don't have 100 reviews? And I'm like, oh, hold on. Okay, first of all, it takes time, but second of all, uh, remember there's more than just getting reviews. So, you know, you're, it's all about exposure and anyway, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so Katie, uh, we have some questions. Uh, I, I know a lot of the answers here, but uh, you're the NetGalley person here. So I'm gonna kind of throw them to you and I'm gonna let you be the, you know, do your thing. Um, sure, I'm ready. One question real quick, people asked about the chat. So. Um, as I mentioned, if you put your questions in the chat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the whole chat afterward, and uh, I will be emailing a link to that. If you're putting your questions in the Q&A, one, I haven't been checking that as much, but also um, that does not get included in the main chat. So please put your questions in the um, the, the main chat function. But anyway, uh, all right, uh, Katie, um, someone asked about um, covers having a fixed layout as well. So. Maybe you can talk about like, you know, maybe some of the specs about people getting us covers. Oh yeah, so I actually, I think that um, I saw that question pop up when it happened. And um, I think that was in reference to whether or not the EPUB files uh, cover fixed lay layout files. Um, I think that was at the time when we were talking about that. Um, and just in general, um, fixed layout files, we don't necessarily recommend them for e EPUB files. Um, they don't always show up super well on um, reading devices. So if you have a fixed layout file, send us a PDF. That's going to be much, much be better to work with. It'll look better on the site. Um, and of course, I know that you guys at the IBPA, you test every file that you upload to make sure that looks great and everything. So um, if you're unsure about a file ever, just go ahead and send them to Christopher um, and he'll test them and make sure that they're up and running and look great. And if not, um, we'll, they'll work with you to get a, a new file that will work perfect. Yeah, and on that note, just to kind of delineate what's best for what type of book, um, I mentioned this earlier, but some, some people seem to still question, maybe they came in early or late. Mm -hmm. um, so PDF is cookbooks, um, uh, picture books, right? Things that have a lot of pictures. If your book has two pictures, um, but it's the rest is all text, it's probably still better to do a EPUB. Uh, and here's why EPUBs are better. First off, EPUBs automatically convert to a Mobi file on NetGalley site. They have a, a connection with uh, a Kindle, so they automatically you will get a Mobi version if you have an EPUB. If you give them a uh, and we upload a PDF, those do not convert as well to Mobi files. Sometimes it'll be okay, but for the most part, if you give us a PDF, it 
it, the formatting will be off and we might have to disable the Kindle version. And so then you might, you know, sometimes the downloads are a little less. Now that said, for picture books and cookbooks, people that know they have a lot of pictures, PDFs do really well. I mean, picture books, uh, children's picture books do really well in the program and they are only PDFs. So sure, you can give us a PDF. It's just EPUBs are better. They're more easily readable for people's uh, e-readers, okay? Uh, so hopefully that kind of explains it a little bit better. And again, in that document that um, you can download on our site, it explains everything in real, real deep detail, okay? Uh, so, Katie, let's see what the next question is. Um, uh, people were asking about the ISBN. So remember how I mentioned about the primary ISBN and then someone asked, uh, well, what about the other ISBN? So maybe you could explain you know, why they might also give those versus the primary ISBN. For sure, yeah. So um, the ISBN is really, really important um, on Netcatly. So it's the only way that we use um, to connect the book on NetGalley to sites like Goodreads and Amazon. So um, the ISBN is really important to have, first of all. So <laughs> instead of just an ISIN, um, it's really, we really need that ISBN. Um, so as for which ISBN you choose, that's really up to you. I always recommend whichever one you want to promote the most. So um, if it's really, really important for you to get ebook e sales, then use that ebook ISBN because that's the one that's going to be linked to Amazon, that's the one that's going to be linked on Goodreads, et cetera. So it's that ISBN that allows us to connect those sites together and everything just becomes more cohesive. Okay. And uh, let me go back up and look at the questions. We got a lot of questions. So I'm trying to I'm trying to go <laughs> through, but there's there's so many. Uh, and some are kind of repeats. Um, oh, here's one one of the bigger questions was about whether or not people just post a book that has not been published yet versus posting a book that was published like 10 years ago or something. Right. So one of the best things I think about NetGalley is that every book that's uploaded on the site gets an equal opportunity. So whether that's an upcoming book, um, a book set that's publishing in six months or three months, or a book that was published two years ago, everything gets promoted in exactly the same way on the site. You get exactly the same amount of attention um, depending on what you're doing and, and stuff like that. So it, it doesn't matter whether or not your book is prepub or was published years ago. Um, you're still going to get the exact same experience that someone else with a pre-publication book has. So it's really up to you. I think it's really great to publish um, or to post books that have already been published in particular examples. So let's say you have um, a new title coming up from an author who um, wants to also just build buzz for their first book in a series. So in that case, we definitely recommend posting that first book in a series to build buzz, grab readers, um, build excitement right from the very beginning. And then you can post the second book later on and you should definitely send a widget from that first book, so the, all the titled activity that happened from that first book, you should send a widget to those readers for the second book. So there's always really amazing ways to use NetGalley for your older titles as well. Very cool. And uh, another kind of big question people were asking. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh, um, how long before your book goes into publication should you post your book? So this is for books that haven't been published yet. Right, of course. Yeah, so we, we always re recommend at least three months pre-publication. Um, three to six months is kind of that, that perfect window. But if you don't have your files ready until a month before, then a month before is the exact time that you should be listing. It's, it's really kind of up to you and your own goals and your own strategies, but mostly we recommend at least three months pre-publication. Okay, and someone was asking about how Amazon does not allow pre-publication reviews. So they were asking then, um, can a book run, and this kind of was just answer, but can it run past the publication date? So, Oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's entirely up to you um, and the program that the IBPA has. So you guys have a three month and six month program. So if you want to get started, um, six months, you want to do the six month listing, um, but you are only starting three months pre-publication, you can start do three months pre-publication and three months after. So that's entirely up to you. Yeah, and on that note, someone else asked, um, you know, like how long, like what's the sweet spot? So you you kind of answered that. Um, so I, I think we're probably pretty good with that kind of line mm -hmm. of uh, questioning. Um, so, okay, someone, a lot of people are asking about the audio book and they were saying that um, 
like audiobooks, depending on your uh, uh, like contract with ACX, uh, it could be exclusive to ACX. So they were wondering how that works um, for NetGalley. So our general rule of policy on that is we can't necessarily comment on contracts that we're not party to. So unfortunately, we can't comment on you know things that we're we're not involved in. But anecdotally, we can say that we've never had issues with, and that that applies to like KDP or or something like that. Um, so we've never had issues with um, violating any terms like that because NetGalley books are not for sale. So we're not the ones selling the books. Um, it's just a promotional tool. It's a marketing tool. Um, so generally speaking, we can say that the, anecdotally there has never been any issues with that. Awesome. And people were asking then also about the NetGalley readers who join. Um, some are librarians, some are educators, but uh, they were wondering like, how do you like verify like the, the people that join NetGalley in terms of like, I don't know, maybe, you know, if they're legitimate or something like that. So that is kind of the benefit of listing with NetGalley directly, because if you are worried about um, readers that you don't want accessing your books, you're really going to want to choose the approval option. So that means that you get to see a full profile of everything that the member has done on the site. So you get to see previous reviews, you get to check out all their credentials, any links that they say. Um, if they are, for example, an ALA approved librarian, you'll be able to see like a little badge on their profile that says we have verified that. Yes, they do um, work for a library and they're a part of the ALA, um, all those things. So um, when you have read now titles, um, you don't necessarily get to uh, approve who has downloaded the books, um, but you will always get to see a list of, of members who are um, reading your books as well. So. Yeah, and also, as Katie mentioned earlier, uh, all your books will have DRM, they'll have rights protection. Uh, NetGalley, ha when you, we upload your book, it goes through a process adding that stuff. So in terms of if you're like concerned about like piracy or something, like they they really protect your your files. So no one's downloading your direct file, they're, they're downloading what already has protections on it. Uh, so um, like, they're, they're really good about that. So I, I wouldn't be concerned. Um, I've, since I've run the program, I've not had any issues with anyone's like file being pirated. It's just, it's just, it's too, it would be too difficult for people to do. Um, okay, so people were wanting to ask about how often they should get the reports. If it's okay, I, I might just give my yeah. suggestion on how people do it um, through us. Uh, people ask for the reports, sometimes like every two weeks, um, sometimes a month. And to clarify, um, we don't automatically send them. So I think sometimes people will do the program and they'll be like, they sit back and go, great, when am I gonna get my reports? Uh, you email me and then we'll send them, but they're not just gonna be sent automatically. Every now and then, if we have time as a courtesy, we might try one month in sending them because sometimes people don't read the documentation. So we kind of wanna, we sometimes like, if we have time, we'll be like, just so you know, uh, here's your reports. But um, sometimes we don't have time to do that. So just email me, we're happy to send them. Um, okay. Uh, oh, someone was asking, is this program appropriate for book and sideline? And I think what they mean, they said children's book and then a comfort toy set. So something that's like uh, connected to like a children's book or some book that's like an item, I guess. It's like a package. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so obviously we, we can't have anything to do with the like separate package or anything. Um, what we can do is upload press kit files. So if you want to show images of what's all involved in the package, or if you wanted to send a link to like a teacher's guide, for example, like how to use these um, things, we can definitely do that. You can upload in that in the pro press kit section. Um, but yeah, like if, if you're looking for reviews and feedback and info on the book itself, then yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the way to get that kind of stuff to us is when you fill out the metadata form, if you do the IBPA NetGalley program, there's a thing that says like uh, upload like any other files and that's where you would upload uh, like your author's photo, uh, you'd upload the, the press kit, like things like that. So yes, there's a way to, to get us that. Uh, someone asking about the pricing for like the featured title. So uh, maybe some people came in late. Um, the, on that link I sent, uh, all the pricing's there. Um, so featured placement, category spotlight, uh, all the pricing's on that link I sent. Um, uh, oh, someone was asking, um, how often do you feature debut novels? Um, so I think they're asking about like your feature placement, you know, in terms of themes. 
Yeah, um, I think the debut author one is actually one that we do fairly regularly, um, maybe like two or three times a year. Um, so of course it's not every month, um, but yeah, it's it's more often than a lot of other themes that we do. It's uh, yeah, one of the most popular ones that we have on the site and it's always fun and exciting to learn about debut authors. So um, we do have a full list of um, like an editorial calendar that shows like a full list of everything that's upcoming throughout the year. So you can always check that out on the site. Um, Chris, I don't know if you have a copy of that, but I can send you one or a link to it um, if anybody asks or follows up with that. Um, or you can, of course, email me directly with any questions um, if you're looking for that. Yeah, and real quick, uh, sorry, I was copying a question. So uh, tell me again what you were looking for. Uh, I'm trying to do like 70 things at once. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, just the featured titles, um, like calendar oh, oh, oh so, yeah, yeah 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 if you go on our website the way we do it is i there's a drop down menu on the feature titles page and it lists everything for the rest of the year so mm -hmm. you'll see all of them listed um okay so uh someone asked kind of like a general question like tips for nonfiction books like uh, education psychology i mean um i think this might be kind of like like uh, maybe for ways to like help promote i mean we kind of went over the general like extra promotion but i do want to reiterate like i have a document called the getting the most out of neck alley program that i'm going to give to you and that was something i created for the ibpa program and it has like i don't know like 10 pages or something of tips so uh it's too much for me to go through now but i want your book to succeed so i definitely put all those tips in there i don't know katie if you want to add anything to that concept Sure. Yeah, I, I think so. It sounds like that type of book is just a little more niche. So in those cases, we definitely want to set expectations. You're not going to get the exact same amount of organic attention as like a new Stephen King novel. Um, so you are going to have to put a little bit of work into promoting your book on the site, um, whether that means promoting your book on social media or reaching out via the widget to your own list of contacts. So that is definitely something that you should prepare for. You're going to have to do a little bit of on the ground work, but the site will absolutely um, you'll see some success if, if you're doing all those things um, and you'll get some organic attention as well, of course. Yeah. And then someone was asking about like uh, the categories in general, but they were, I think also specifically with the category spotlight, uh, they were asking about like, so if you have romance, like sub genres, like romantic suspense and things like that. Mm, yeah, no, the, the categories on the site are, are just more general um, because we, we kind of just don't have the space to to list all these subgenres. But I think you'll find that, that that we have categories to cover your book. So it's even if it's just like a general fiction thing or romance or sci fi fantasy, we have something probably for every book. Okay, and then the next question is uh, to do, uh, they were asking how, a, how does a title get promoted? Uh, is it by vote only? I'm not sure what they mean by the promoted title. Maybe, do you know what they're asking about? Um, maybe about the library reads and um, Indie Next List. Maybe, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, the way that works is when a librarian, um, someone who has chosen the librarian category on NetGalley, when they sign up as a reader, when they review a title, they are asked the question, would you like to nominate this book for library reads? And if that's the case, they'll say yes. And then that actually does count as a vote. So that book is then nominated for the library reads book list, which is a list of industry. Um, it's, a, it's an important industry list for librarians. I think it's a, a top 10 list of um, upcoming books um, that are being published within that month. Um, and then it's shared with other librarians and gets a lot of buzz and a lot of attention and a good chunk of the time librarians then order your book for their library. Um, and it's it's a similar process for um, the Indie Next list. That's just for booksellers as well. And uh, I can probably answer this question. Um, so someone was saying as a marketer for publishers and authors, so they're not the uh, they're not the publisher or the author. They're wondering if they can sign up for a subscription. So I can tell you for the IBPA Net Kelly program all the time, I have people that are IBPA members that uh, do promotion and marketing and such. And yes, they sign up uh, for other people like their their publisher book that they're working with through them. So as long as you are an IBPA member, then you'll be able to sign up through IBPA and do that. Uh, Katie, you're, you're welcome to answer for your, your end. Yeah, no, it's exactly the same for us too. We get a ton of um, PR and, and marketing people who sign up 
um, authors that they're working with for NetGalley and they run the account and the author just kind of sits and <laughs> the PR person does all the work and we get that a lot. So yeah, that's definitely a great way to use the site. And people were asking about if they only have an ARC. So the advanced reading copy, uh, they're wondering, is it okay to post that or should they wait till they have the final version of the book? Yeah, so that that is the galley portion of NetGalley. So advanced reading copies, we definitely work with those. Um, readers know that they're getting advanced reading copy a good chunk of the time. We just kind of ask that the file is functional. Um, you're not going to run into glaring errors. You're not going to run into editorial issues. Um, it should be like an edited, you know, for formally um, like formatted uh, file so that it just doesn't run into any tech issues. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we definitely could work with advanced reading copies. And uh, uh, someone says they, for picture books, they use Kindle Kids Book Creator and it creates a fixed format Mobi file. So they're wondering if that works or if they should still do a PDF version for this. Interesting. Um, so those are one of those cases where I would definitely recommend testing the file. So um, it might be that the Mobi does work. Um, it's not <laughs> not always the best. Um, Kindle is not, never very kind to image um, heavy books, but that's the case where I would definitely recommend testing both and to see which one works best. Yeah, and someone then it's kind of the same kind of question. They were asking if they use Calibre to create EPUB files. Uh, they're wondering if that's good enough too. Yeah, uh, most of the time Calibre does uh, produce fairly good files. Um, so yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, um, and I can, I, I will just reiterate, I don't really know that much about Calibre, but again, I will say the files that people create themselves, if they're not a professional ebook designer, um, like most of the time have issues. So if you aren't like a professional ebook designer and someone wouldn't hire you to create it, I would say, you know, you've worked on this book or you're publishing a book for someone else and they've been working on it for years, you want to set them up for success. So the last, and, and here's a little tip. If you post a file, if it, let's say the file doesn't work, great, error, I'll tell you that doesn't work. Um, that's bad enough, but if sometimes the files will get through that process, it will get onto NetGalley and then it will have, people will go to read it and it will have formatting issues and they will they will have an impossible time reading it they will then start leaving negative reviews. Oh, I can't read this book, it's terrible. Now, if they aren't able to, if they're having technical issues, technically they're supposed to reach out to NetGalley and say, hey, uh, I, I'm having technical issues with this book and not leave a review. So we, we can get them to remove that review, but now you've given them a bad experience with, their, with your book and that's not what you want. Plus, here's another pro tip, your book when it's posted onto NetGalley in your audio book, it shoots to the top of multiple lists. Uh, whatever category you chose, it's the very first book posted in that category. Uh, it's the fine titles page. Everything goes right to the top. If your book has problems and we have to archive it for you to get us a new file, it starts inching down. Every new book that's posted will then push your book further down. And if your book takes a like a month to fix, now your book's pushed that far down and now we repost it, it does not go back to the top again. So that's why I really want everyone to use the right file in the beginning because it's like, you know, you're not setting your book up for success. So I just want, I just want to throw that out there because I really want to help you and I, I don't want your books to, to do poorly. Um, okay, so um, can promotional videos for our book be uploaded to NetGalley? You kind of answered that, but you can, uh, you can answer that again if you want, Katie. Sorry, what was that question? Uh, can promotional videos for our book be uploaded to NetGalley? Oh, yeah. Um, as long as they're under a certain uh, file size, I can't remember what file size that is exactly, but I'm sure you have it listed <laughs> in your info somewhere. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely take videos. Yeah, and that would then be in the press kit section, right? That's where it would end up. Yeah, yeah. unless and, it's a YouTube video and you want to link that to like a book trailer or something, you can use the link section for that. Yeah, 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 exactly. We, we, and if the file is really big, then that's what we would recommend, right? Is just to say, give us the link and then we'll, we'll link it to the whatever, if it's on YouTube or Vimeo or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fullet School Solutions has specific review companies they recognize. Are companies like Booklinks, Booklist, Hornbook, Kirkus, and so on using NetGalley? Uh, they are for to re review books. Yeah, we definitely have um, members from all of those companies using NetGalley to download books for sure. Um, someone 
was asking about the widget. I think they misunderstood what the widget was. Um, they said, is the widget the whole book or just part of the book? So maybe you can quickly explain. Yeah, so the widget provides access to the full file on NetGalley, um, unless, of course, you've only provided an excerpt, in which case it'll just be an excerpt. But the widget, yeah, it, it's the full book on the site. Whatever you have uploaded, they'll get instant access to that full um, file. And uh, someone says, can you explain a bit more the actual steps about how we are able to contact reviewers with follow-up promotion? Yeah, so the reports that you get sent, um, so that detailed activity report, that feedback report, um, it just comes as an Excel, Excel file. So if you have Excel on your computer, you can see a full list. It'll have you know, a column for their name, their email address, their review, uh, where they shared their review online, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in that case, if you want to follow up with the readers, you'll just have to copy and paste their email into your own email and send them that email. Um, and if you're doing that on a, a mass level, you'll just have to copy that whole row of email addresses, click BCC um, on your email browser, and then paste that into the BCC field. OK. Um, let's see. Do I understand correctly that there are NetCali features and services that are only available with a direct account that are not available through IBPA? We've kind of gone over this, but um, feel free to maybe clarify again. Sure, yeah. So probably the one thing that um, is most important to most readers is, or most uh, authors and publishers listing with Nick Alley directly is that you can um, have your book as listed as approval only. So that means that um, readers have to then request the book first, and then the publisher and author has to review that person's profile, review their request, say, yes, this is a, a person of value, I want you reading my book, or maybe I don't. So then, then that person doesn't get access to that book. So that's probably the biggest one. Um, there is a bunch of different other things, um, like your, your ability to just kind of change your settings. You can change your DRM. You can change um, a bunch of different things about uh, your listing on the site. But there's just a little bit too much to talk about right now. But um, I would say that the request availability is probably the biggest and most important. Uh, okay, and um, someone was asking about companies that create ebook files. So um, I'm gonna. There are two companies that create ebook files that IBPA has member benefits for. So I'm gonna give you a link to the member benefits page again. Uh, one is called Gatekeeper Press. That's now in the chat, and the other one is called Book Baby, and both of those give discounts to IBPA members. So click on that link I just put in there. And you're gonna, you can look up those. And of course, there's you know other companies that do it, like Ingram Spark creates files. They just don't give our members a discount on creating uh, the files. Um, someone was asking about the direct link. So you all have seen I've posted multiple times about the link to the IBPA program pricing. Uh, Katie, do you have a link when I'm chatting and asking the next question? Uh, get through the net Kelly program. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just, uh, the video cut out for a little bit, yeah. so I didn't hear any of uh, that. This is the link for the direct link to the net Kelly if they want to just go directly through net Kelly. Um, yeah, um, well, since I'm sharing my screen right now, I don't have a link right now, but I can send it um, after the call, um, or I can send that to you and you can send it to your readers and your follow-up info. Um, and you can also, as always, reach out to me and I can send that to you as well. Uh, so uh, someone else, um, someone said, do you recommend uploading the whole book or just the first couple of chapters? The whole book, for sure. Most of our, our readers are expecting a whole book on the site. Um, the only way I would recommend listing an excerpt or just the first couple chapters is if you make it really, really clear that this is an excerpt or the first couple chapters. Yeah. Oh, and uh, actually, I wanted to clarify, too, We the question just before about services that NetGalley only if you go directly through NetGalley. Uh, so Katie mentioned a bunch of marketing services. And through our program, we have the feature placement and category spotlight that you can order through our program. That does not mean that you cannot get, if you do our program, you cannot do the e-blast, the newsletter, and all that stuff. The reason we don't have that on our site is a lot of our members, uh, their budgets are a little bit lower. And the e-blast, the newsletter, are incredible marketing programs. And our members have used them, uh, but they tend to be a little bit higher. I think Katie maybe. $400, $500 is the lowest for some of those, and then it can go up to above 1000 right? 
Yeah, that's true. Um, I think our newsletters start at 600 and the e-blast start at $1,000 and can go up depending on the size of the um, reader base that you're sending them to. So. Okay, great. Um, and uh, uh, oh, someone was asking if readers on NetGalley can request a print version or is that discouraged? We do not work with print uh, galleys directly or print versions of the book. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to someone who's, you know, asked for one and you can do that outside of the site itself. So you just organize that via email. You're definitely welcome to do that. But Net Alley does not deal with um, physical copies directly. And uh, do, 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 uh, do, do, um, oh, someone was asking about that tips document I have, whether or not um, uh, do we only get your tips in it if we sign up for a promo? So um, I send that auto. I send that when you when I list your book onto NetGalley, I will automatically email that to you. Um, I mean, if you don't do the program, I, you know, and you email me directly, I can send it to you. But it's you know, it's not going to be much help if you don't do NetGalley. Uh, but sure, you can email it to me, and you can see some of those tips. Um, but whenever we post your book on NetGalley, I will send an email to you saying, "Hey, your book's live. It's exciting." And in that email, it will be this document. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I don't think I've given you my email address. So it's Christopher at ibpa-online.org. Uh, I just put that in the chat. And so you're welcome to email me if you have questions as well. Um, uh, oh, if we start with an ARC, can we later have the file uh, uploaded during the listing term? And, and I can just really quickly answer that. I do that, yes. Like if you email me the file, like, well, we'd have you drop it in our Dropbox folder because they're normally pretty big. Uh, but yes, just email me, say, hey, I have a new file and um, I put it in the Dropbox folder and then I will um, I will then upload that for you. So yeah, th that's fine, no problem. Um, to, to do, oh, if an ARC was accepted up uh, through Ingram Spark, will that work for NetGalley? It should, yeah, I, I see no issues with that. And I would say check our, uh, our in the form that I, I sent you all, the, or that page where you can download that form. Just check the optimization. Um, Neckley did a really good job of listing all of the, there's like for EPUB, PDF, and Mobi, they have a link for how you optimize the files. And it's in that form that I said you can download on that page. Uh, and so if you have any questions, you can send that to your ebook designer and they can kind of look it over. Um, and I would recommend doing that. Um, so yeah, uh, does IBPA offer any recommendations to an agency who creates, oh, oh I already did that one. Okay, so um, and someone, again, I think this will be the last question because we're, we're already running over, uh, <laughs> but um, how many users on NetGalley per month? Ooh, that's a good question. One I do not know off the top of my head. <laughs> Cause you have the, you had the kind of overall, like how many people are on there. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and that, that'll be in the slide. So if you, you know, um, if you look back at, I'll send the slides and I'll send the recording. So y'all can kind of see in general, how many people um, are on there and also how, how much it's risen over time. Um, so uh, I know someone was asking about like the pricing and they just noted that the, it, on our page, it says $450 savings. Uh, I had that accidentally listed under the six month listing, but it's $450 savings. I, sorry, uh, $150 savings. Uh, it's actually for the three month listing because the neck alley uh, is only a six month and that's 450. So I'll, I'll go to our website and change that. But um, I can't tell you all how much I appreciate everyone for coming. Uh, I don't, Katie, if you have any last minute uh, things you wanted to impart some wisdom you wanted to impart on everyone. Yeah, so first of all, I just wanted to mention that I just shared that um, direct link to order with Nick Alley directly um, on a per title basis. So that's just nickalley.com slash packages slash order on that link there. Um, so if you wanted to list with us directly, that would be the place to go. You'll have the choice to um, either just have the listing itself or you can have um, our Marketing Plus bundle, which includes a discounted price on the newsletter. So that's a really, really great option if you are interested in the newsletter. Um, and if you're interested in a subscription, then you can just email me directly and we can have a chat. Um, just yeah. as a question, did you put that in the chat? Or maybe you sent it to someone privately because I don't see it in the main chat unless I'm totally missing um, it. I had it, I listed it as all attendees, so maybe you are not included in that. Oh, um, wow. It's everyone except me. <laughs> all right. Well, forget everyone. Uh, all right. Let's <laughs> do that again. Um, there we go. Okay. 
there we go. Now you should. Now I see it. See okay, that. great. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, now I can get a, a neck alley listing. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah, this this was amazing. Um, had a really great time, and I appreciate um, you partnering with us so closely. And we look forward to working with you guys more in the future. Yeah, and I can tell everyone here that uh, IBPA, we do our best to give great customer service. I can tell you everything that we have, any questions we have from NetGalley, um, you will email me directly and I'll ask them, but they are, they've been so helpful and they're always responsive with ways to kind of fix you know things. So uh, it, it's a really great partnership we have with them and uh, I couldn't be more pleased that we have this program because it's nice that indie publishers have access to this uh, more easily, because um, I know it's it's such a great you know place to be able to post your books and your audiobooks. So we're really pleased we're able to provide this opportunity for our members. Um, so uh, Kitty, thank you so much. I'm going to hit stop recording. Thank you, everyone, uh, and uh, uh, we did it. We did a good job.